Hi, my name is Tina, and this is Knitting Blooms, episode number 118. Have you seen the new Twisted Lights from Barmaids? Twisted Lights are the most incredible beeswax candle with a very long burn time. For example, the smaller of the Twisted Lights burns for approximately 20 hours. But that's not what sets it apart from other candles. Twisted Lights look exactly like small balls of yarn. They look so much like a ball of yarn, it almost looks like somebody took a ball of yarn and dipped it in wax. And just like balls of yarn, Twisted Lights comes in lots of amazing colors and they are 100% beeswax. Barmaids does not use any additives or hardeners in their candles, nor do they coat their molds with toxic mold release. You can get your Twisted Light candles at www.bar-maids.com. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm so happy that you decided to spend some time with me today. I have a lot in store for you. I'm going to really try to keep this under an hour, but I have a lot to share with you this week. I want to start the show off by um, sending out my thank yous. I want to thank all of you who sent your virtual hugs and kisses and whatnot um, the last couple weeks in regards to Mickey. It really made me feel you know, loved and it didn't hurt quite as bad knowing that all of you were out there thinking about me and keeping me in your hearts at the time. And it was a really, a really difficult time for, for us here. You, you just, you just never know when the right time is. And you always think, is there something else that you could do? If you could, you could, um, what other treatments you can try, but honestly, I think we had we had tried just about everything that we could try. I mean, we had him on holistic medicine. Um, when that wasn't working, we were we we went to the prednisone, and it, it just his condition. I think he had from from birth, uh, but it just took a while to really start affecting him. And it was really a rough couple of weeks. And each and every day, it gets a little bit easier. Um, I Even this week, I found myself breaking down. Um, and I'll get into that um, in a few minutes. But, um, yeah, it was just really nice to know that everybody was, was thinking about me and Steve and the rest of the cats and, and what we were going through. So I truly, truly thank you for that. But the last two weeks since then have been a little crazy. I have been on the emergency vet merry-go-round this, this couple weeks. <laughs> First there was Mickey, and then a couple days after um, Mickey passed away, it was probably almost a week, Crystal ended up cutting herself. She was trying to get into the attic space. We have a like a, an attic access, and Steve rebuilt a door for the attic access, and it wasn't quite fitting right, and he needed to do some modifications to it. And it was propped open just a tiny, tiny bit, just enough for her to get her paw in there and pull down the door. Well, I don't think she hurt herself on the door, um, but I think when the door started to fall, she got scared and took off running and cut herself on something. And she was bleeding pretty good. I think she just broke her nail for a couple days there. I couldn't even, I, I didn't want to really get in there and check. It had stopped bleeding pretty quickly once I had caught her and um, and took a look at it, it. It had stopped bleeding, so I wasn't too concerned about that. And she was licking it and cleaning it. And she did let me touch it a little bit, but because there was dried blood on it, I didn't want to really dig in there and do too much with it. So that was a little bit of a craziness. Um, and that happened at like, I don't know, like 4 o'clock in the morning. Before it was time to get up but still early early in the morning 
So that was crazy. And then earlier this week, um, Sammy had me on the merry-go-round, throwing me off. On Tuesday, um, she had been acting kind of funny a little bit over the weekend, and on Tuesday morning I decided, she, I noticed that she was drinking a lot of water, and I decided that I would go ahead and test her sugar. She was diagnosed with diabetes back in 2009, and at the time I went through um, a lot of websites and learning about uh, feline diabetes, and I felt like I needed to be testing her at home. So I had gotten a whole glucose meter and whatnot, and I just used the regular human meters, although the numbers can be slightly skewed because cat um, blood is a little bit different than human blood. Um, so the numbers are a little bit skewed, but at least they're close enough to, so I can know if she's high or low or whatever. Anyway, I tested her Tuesday morning, and she was like over 500, just over 500, not like, I think she was like 508 or something like that. But that's still way high. Uh, normal for a cat um, on a, on a uh, feline meter is like 70 to 130. So it's still about the same range as humans, but on a human meter, when she, when she was being tested before, when she got off of the um, insulin, she was like in the 50s most of the time. So I knew 500 was way, way too high. So I thought, okay, well, we had been giving her some dry food, and we weren't quite sure if that was the cause of it. And I thought, well, we'll see how she is after work. And when I got home from work, she was off the chart. I mean, the, the meter only goes up to 600, and she was considered high. And I tested her like three times because I thought, well, maybe something's wrong with the strips. And actually, the strips that I had were expired, which is why Tuesday after work I stopped by um, and got some more strips just to make sure that it wasn't the strips that were, were funny. Anyway, she was high, so I decided that I needed to take her to the vet right now. I, right then, I couldn't wait um, because she was so high. And I got her to the vet, and she was over 800. She was just slightly over 800, but still, 800. I mean, if you know anything about diabetes, 800 is in the life-threatening range if you keep them there too long. So... Anyway, this was late in the afternoon. The, the first available appointment they could get me into was like 7 o'clock. Um, and by the time I got out of there, it was after 8, and the pharmacy's closed at 9. And so I'm rushing around trying to get her home, get to the pharmacy. It was a little stressful for me. I would be surprised if my sugar level didn't go up. Um, needless to say, I think that a lot of her problem was that... Um, She's under stress from losing Mickey. We've been giving her more dry food, which she really hasn't been eating a lot of. Um, but after two doses of insulin, she was, she's was she been pretty normal. I mean, I gave her a dose Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. And since then, I haven't have had to give her any insulin. Um, and she's she's been a little bit high, but not high to the point where the doctors are like, we need to give her insulin. She was she's been just over a hundred um, most of the time. She did go up to two hundred yesterday um, yesterday evening, but again, not. She came back down a little bit after she ate. That was after she ate, and then this morning she was right around a hundred again. So. Right now, we're just kind of waiting to see what happens. But again, I think that a lot of the problem was is that she was having some some um, issues with the diet because since Mickey, actually, since Sammy was originally diagnosed with diabetes, she's been on a very strict eating schedule. And then when Mickey started to have really um, advanced in his disease, it even got more strict where before... Um, we would, they had strict eating, eating plan, and then the food was being uh, picked up, but then Mickey, um, started to have more issues, and he had a special diet, and then he learned to jump up onto the counter, which is where we kept the food for the other cats, where he couldn't get to it, but then he finally got thin enough where he could jump up onto the counter. So, needless to say, for the past two years, they've had a very strict diet, very little, um, dry food. But in the past two weeks, we've been 
kind of babying them a little bit more because of um, losing Mickey. And Sammy and Mickey were very close also, so I think that that might play a part in her issues as well. Well, and also, in addition to the diabetes, the, the 805 was not even the, um, the icing on the cake. Her kidney values were also very high, but um, she was very dehydrated. So, needless to say, this week I gave her insulin. We've been giving her fluids all week um, at home, and um, she's also on antibiotics as a precaution, possibly having an infection. We have to take her back next week for a final for follow-up check, but her sugar has been good, and hopefully it was just the diet. We've taken her off the dry food completely again, and if we do let her have dry food again in the future, it will be a very low-carb dry food. So yeah, that, that's been a little, a little crazy this week. Um, since last weekend, though, I have been trying to catch up on podcasts, and last weekend... I finally came to the realization that I am never going to catch up on podcasts. <laughs> because I catch up and then I don't watch podcasts for a week. And then I'm so far behind. So normally I like to watch podcasts in order. So I don't like to watch an episode and then watch a, uh, um, an older episode after that. I don't know why I like to see the progress in order. I don't like to go backwards. But this weekend, or actually last weekend, I started watching the current podcast. So what I did was I created a new playlist in Downcast so that it put all of my video podcasts into one playlist and then listed them from newest to oldest. And I did not group it by podcast. So if a new podcast came out that day, I would watch that first and then go backwards and then watch older podcasts as time permits. Now, what I have decided, though, is if the podcast is over a month old and I haven't gotten it to it yet, then it's time to just delete it and move on. I just, I watch so many. I think I have 156 podcasts listed in Downcast. Now, that's audio and video, um, and there's some that are shorter, some that are longer, some that only record every couple of weeks, some that record once a month. So it's not like I'm getting 156 new podcasts a week, but um, still, that's a lot of podcasts. So I have been kept keeping up this week, um, but that's what I've been doing with my, with my podcasts now. Also, I, have, I mentioned last week that I'm doing 200,000 steps. And it is wearing me out. Just yesterday, I was just exhausted. By 2.30, usually I'm go, 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 and 200,000 or 30,000 steps a day was not a big deal for the last three weeks. Yesterday, by 2.30 and at about 21,000 steps, I was just like, I'm done. I just, I had no more energy. I was wiped out. And I don't know if it was it's all the stress from Sammy because, you know, I think it was Wednesday after work, you know, because I left her home all day by herself and then I got home Wednesday. And, like, for the hour before I left work and then coming home, I think my anxiety was building up because I was nervous about what was I going to find when I got home. Is it, were her numbers going to be spiked back up again? Um... You know what? Where where was she going to be? I was I my anxiety just got the better of me, so I think that maybe that's part of my problem is that my my stress level has been wiping me out, uh, which is why I think my yesterday I hit a wall and was done. And even this morning a little bit, um, I got on the treadmill and was walking for forty minutes, and then I was like, I just I just wanted to take a nap. And so I gave myself a pass and I kind of, I haven't totally given up on the 200,000 steps just yet, but this week it might be hard for me to reach that 200,000 because today I think I'm only at about 15,000 and I probably am not going to be doing that much more walking today. Oops. Yeah, it's at 15,000. That was just telling me. Um, that I met my my minimum, which was 15,000. Um, 
But yeah, I might, I probably am not going to be do, do, doing too much walking today. I may get to 20,000, but I need to hit 28,571 steps in order to reach, that's a day, um, in order to reach my, um, my goal of 200,000 steps. I'm not sure that's going to happen this week, but we'll, we'll see what happens as the week goes on. So that has been my crazy week. Um, the one good thing that really I haven't done since last week is play SimCity. SimCity finally came out for Mac, and I was having a ball with it um, last week. But since the weekend, I haven't played, and this week I haven't played. I guess I've been just getting my mojo back, and I've been doing a lot of knitting. Um, but... I have been having fun with that, and if you play SimCity, um, let me know so I can friend you over there. So that's been a lot of fun. So that has been my crazy two weeks, in a nutshell. Sort of. I mean, what was that, like 15 minutes of talking about my week? Crazy! So let's jump into the knitting. And I am drinking coffee, but it is decaf, because it's like 6.15. <laughs> at night. And if I drank regular coffee at 6.15 at night, I would be up until 2 a.m. But I wanted something to drink, and it has been quite cold here today. I think it was like 60 degrees was the high. It's been quite chilly today, and I just wanted something warm to drink and to sit here and chat with you for a bit. So let's, let me tell you what I haven't worked on. And this week, I've worked on a lot. I've worked on almost every one of my projects and some secret projects. Um, sock yarn blanket, no love to that this week. However, I'm really getting the itch to work on it because, as you know, I have been knitting socks after socks after socks, and I would love to be able to add those um, sock yarns into my blanket, the ones that I have finished in the last couple weeks, well, the last couple months, actually, because... Um, I don't even remember how many socks I finished, probably, I don't know, six pairs, at least six pairs in the last few months. So, yeah, so I really would like to work on my sock yarn blanket and put those, um, those yarns into it, maybe this weekend. We'll see what my schedule permits. If I'm doing my walking, probably won't have time, but if I'm taking a break from the walking... I probably will have more time. But that's really the only project that I did not work on this week. I worked on all my other projects. And I will start with my finished objects. I officially have three pairs of socks finished this week. But you already saw one of them in last week. Last week I showed you, and I still haven't taken the markers out, but last week I showed you these. And... I did not cast them off last week because I was trying to remember to do my tutorial on the Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. Um, I still have not done that tutorial, but I have done my swatch, or my, yeah, my I guess my swatch, that I'm going to use for um, the tutorial. So that is my reminder now. But these are officially done. I finally cast them off last night. All I had to do was cast them off, and they were done. So that is one pair. The second pair is the Indulgence socks that I had started last week. And there are my stitch markers. Right there. And I finished those off. And again, I cast these off last night because they were all done. And like these socks, I wanted to keep them as a reminder to do my tutorial so I didn't cast them off right away. But... I wanted to start a new pair of socks last night, and my zeros were on these and these. And I probably have another pair of zero Haya Haya's, um, but I didn't want to go digging for them knowing that these two pairs were right there. So those two pairs of socks are done. And I started, oops, I started and finished another pair of socks in the last two weeks. I started and finished these socks. And they are made with socks that rock lightweight in the, hmm, I want to say Hobgoblin or Hobbit Garden. Hmm, I forget what colorway it is. Um, but it's on my project page. You can 
go to my project page. I love them. I love this color. Those pops of blue and the bright turquoisey um, tealy color. These are beautiful. This was a, a, a pair of, um, this was a skein of yarn that I got at Stitches Midwest this year. Uh, my friend Diane and I, we were in the Socks That Rock booth, or actually it's the Fold booth that sells Socks That Rock at Stitches. And I picked up a skein and she picked up a skein. And as we got to the checkout counter, we realized that we had the same yarn. I think she she bought, I bought two skeins and she ended up with the same two colors. So we are going to have matchy matchy socks, which is great because we're also going to have matchy matchy sweaters. Well, at least the same color. Um, she probably will do a different sweater than me, but um, we also ended up with the same um, Madeline Tosh colorway. I think hers was a different um, base than mine, but we like the same colors and the same patterns apparently, but hopefully we won't make the same pattern with the same yarn. <laughs> anyway, so three pairs of socks. None of these have the ends woven in because they all got cast off yesterday. Um, I had one of these cast off earlier in the day yesterday and actually, yeah, one of these got cast off. Yeah, um, no, it must have been Wednesday that I cast one off and the other one, um, I was going to cast off, but I didn't cast it off, but they, um, are done. All of them got cast off last night completely. And I will weave in the ends on all of these this, this weekend. I am going to have so many pairs of socks this winter. It's going to be fabulous. Not that I didn't already have a lot of socks, but we can always use more socks. So, and then this is my bag. Um, that I have all the leftover socks from all three of these pairs and actually I have my my uh, project other project bags in here as well um but I wanna I wanna knit these these um leftovers into my sock yarn blanket and I have to go and collect the other ones um from the Fiber Nymph um Knitopia 2013 colorway. I have leftover from the watermelon, but I'm not going to use that in my sock yarn blanket yet because I'm probably going to try and knit another pair um, of socks with the leftovers because I'm pretty sure I have enough. And then I have um, a few more as well. So I just need to get working on that sock yarn blanket. Mm. One more thing I forgot to mention about my... Um, socks that rock socks. I tried something different with these. Um, I've been talking about doing something different with the heel for a while, but I just finally did it for the first time. Okay, you see how it looks like it's got a little divot here? What I did when I was going to do my short row heel, instead of just doing um, the short row heel on the stitches that were on the heel part, I took, that's my husband texting me. Um, oh, he's going to do surveillance. <laughs> um, so I took three stitches from each side of the front. So these, these uh, were knit on size one, which is different for me because I usually knit all my socks on size zero. And, but socks that rock is a little heavier weight. So these were knit on size one. I cast on, I think 11 stitches and I increased 11 on one side. So that would be 22. And I increased to um, 50, which is 25 on each side. So when I got to the heel, I just moved three stitches from the front from this side and three stitches from the front from this side to the back needle so I could work on those stitches. And then I did the heel exactly the way I would have done it any other way. There was just three extra stitches. And what this does is it provides a little bit deeper of a heel. Okay, so the heel is just a little bit deeper. Now... Honestly, 
I couldn't tell, I've only put these socks on once, but I really couldn't tell the difference, that, that it was that much of a difference um, with the heel a little bit deeper. We'll see how, they, how it is when I wear them, but it is definitely deeper because it's actually like six rows deeper. If, I think it's six rows deeper. Yeah, six rows deeper. Um, cause there's three, three going up and three going, you know, decreasing back down. So we'll see how it goes. I'm trying to do a few different types of heels on my next pair of socks. I'd like to do the, um, that fish lips kiss or whatever heel. Um, so I have to go, I have to read about that and, um, try and work on that for the next one. I just want to try different heels. I've never done an afterthought heel. I'd like to try that. I'd like to try the sweet tomato heel. I just tend to fall into my own pattern uh, because I know how to do my pattern without any instructions. I can just go and I don't have to think and I can just, you know, not think. Um, so a lot of times I just fall back on that and I don't try new, new techniques. But I would like to try some new techniques just to, you know, find out if there's a better heel that I like. And then we have the whips. So let's let's start with this one. This is my featherweight cardigan. And I finished the sleeves. The body I was still working on, but I finished the sleeves and I picked up the stitches for the body again. So here are the sleeves. They were fiddly. <laughs> I knit them in the round. Uh, I think that's what the pattern calls for. Uh, but I was also alternating skeins and, you know, having the lifeline in it to hold the stitches for the body and alternating the skeins and turning the project and trying to keep the yarn from being tangled. I could not wait for the sleeves to be done. The last time I showed it to you, I was right here, it's hard to see, this is an orange marker, but I was right here on the first sleeve. So I finished that sleeve, and then I did this sleeve as well. Once I finished the first sleeve, I just kind of powered through and got the second sleeve done, um, because I knew that if I did not hurry up and get that done, I was gonna be frustrated with it. But I got that done, and I picked up the body stitches, and I have done this much more on the body since I picked up those stitches. So it's coming along. I am in the the stockinette slog section of this project, which is totally fine because really sometimes you just need a stockinette slog project. But I love how the uh, yarn is, I don't know, it's not really pooling, but how it's patterning on the sweater. It's um, a little bit pink in some places and a little bit more yellow in others, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, it's coming along. I know that this part of it will go pretty quickly uh, because I can just sit down and I don't have to think about it. I can just knit, 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 knit. In fact, I did these few rows yesterday, you know, without really even thinking. And before I knew it, I had something like six rows done. So that is coming along. And I really would like to start another sweater, but I want I would like to finish this one first. I don't want to get in the habit of having multiple large projects on the needles. So I'd like to finish up this one before I start another sweater. I have two more two more sweaters that are like right in the forefront of my mind that I'd like to get started, but again, I'd like to finish this one first. Then the next project I have on the needles and actually worked on for a bit is the Lace Infinity Scarf. This is from the Knit Red book, except I'm not knitting it in red yarn. Why am I? Anyway, here it is. I did um, modify this pattern. I did this much on it from my marker. I might have done more since the last time I showed you. My marker was way far down. But I couldn't remember if I showed you that, so I just, when I started working on it this week, I moved the marker up. Um, 
but I did modify the pattern from the book. The book calls for three sections, or yeah, it calls for three sections, and I have four, because I thought I wanted it a little bit wider than what they did. And I am just knitting until I am almost out of yarn. And this is how much yarn I have left. Not that much. But this is a scarf for my mother-in-law. And once it's done, it will be, it's one long piece. But it, th the beginning of it has a provisional cast on, which will be Kitchenered. And then it will be one big loop that she can wrap around multiple times around her head. Or around her neck. Um... It's a very easy pattern to learn and memorize. I picked this up this week after not working on it for several weeks, and I didn't even have to look at the pattern. So, yeah, it's pretty easy to memorize, and I can just go, go, go. Um, I knit this on this bit of it um, during a knit day at the office earlier this week. And um, so, yeah, didn't get too much of it done, but wanted to get some progress on it. But again, not, not too much left to go, but I do want to use as much as this of this yarn as I possibly can. Uh, I'm not going to worry about my, this is my swatch from my Knit Swirl, I'm not going to worry about taking the swatch out and using that up. I'm just going to finish using what I can out of this ball and then be done with it. Because I love that yarn. That is um, Blue Moon Fiber Arts Peru in the mossy colorway. Uh, let's see, the next project is another new project to, to you guys, which I just started. Um, actually, I had started it two weeks ago or last week, um, but then I ended up restarting it this week because it was not right. Um, I am making some mittens, and they are almost done. They just need the thumbs. And these mittens are for a friend of mine from the Biggest Loser Club. She has a disorder and I can't think of the name of it right now. I ha I'm going to have to ask her to um, email it to me, the name. But it's a disorder where your hands and your feet, your circulation is really bad. So she wanted some mittens. She has this little um, kind of like a, a warmer. It's like a about the size of a deck of cards, maybe a little bit smaller. And she has um, this warmer that she likes to hold in her hand, but she has to wear, she have to, she either has to wear gloves that have a pocket, um, or she has to hold it. So she wanted to have some wool gloves, well, she wanted some mittens, and I made them, this is out of Barocco um, Vintage, I believe. And I'm just knitting a basic mitten, and then I'm going to put a pouch right here so she can slide the warmer in and then keep her hand over it. Her her um, hand measurements are a lot bigger than mine, so I have a lot of extra space here in the mitten. Um, but So I'll have a, a pocket here that she can slide the warmer into, and then she can just close her hands over that pocket or over that warmer to um, keep her hands warm. So those are almost done. The thumbs and the pocket are all that's left. And actually... I knit one of these in one day. Um, while I was walking earlier this week, I cast it on, um, and then I the next day I knit the second one. And I just haven't picked it up this week. But those are just some basic mittens from um, the Knitter's Book of Patterns um, book. Um, I really like that book. That and the Book of Sweaters. Um, it's just fabulous for just making ad hoc sweaters and um, mittens or whatever. So that's another project that I worked on. Yeah, I got a lot of knitting done this week. But those socks and the mittens I was able to work on while I walked, so that's part of the part of the thing. Okay, the next project. Oh, the modern log cabin blanket for Sammy haven't really I might have done a couple of rows, but not really a whole lot. The next project is probably going to be the death of me. <laughs> the cat has a head now. <laughs> and ears. But still no arms. One arm that I need to sew on. Oh my goodness. I've had to knit piece after piece after piece after piece. I already had, this is 
one arm. I already made the other arm, and I sewed it on, and then I realized that I did it wrong. So I had to take it off. And I made the second arm, and I forgot to change colors when I was supposed to change colors. And then I just did it the way, so I didn't have to rip it out again. So he has one arm that's done. I have another arm that I have to re-knit because I forgot to do some of the rows at the at the um, at the hand part. Um, he has a head. He doesn't have a mouth yet, <coughs> but that'll be easy to um, sew on once I finish with him. I don't know why it's so difficult for me to do this project. I need to start doing a knitted toy because maybe it's just the crochet that is just driving me crazy. So, I don't know. It is what it is and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this little guy will have another arm, a tail, and a little collar by next week. I also have some secret knitting that I started today, but I can't show you anything about that. But I can show you my next pair of socks. I got this yarn earlier this week. And I even forgot to take a picture of it to put in my stash before I cast it on. <laughs> it is Leading Man Fiber Arts in the showstopper in that that's the base and it's the colorway industrial and this is what it looks like it is awesome this color is mostly blue with um, a, a tinge of gray and burgundy and I just love it Steve contacted me and asked me if I would like to sample his yarn and I am so glad that he did because this is an awesome base. Um, I chose the showstopper base because I like um, my, my socks to have nylon in them. And um, I wanted to make socks with them because I am doing so many socks these days. And so I chose this base and I went through his colorways. And, you know, I have a lot of really bright socks. But I really liked how this colorway looked on the screen. This one, and I think it's London Fog, is another one that I was really looking at. I don't know why. I don't know if my tastes are changing. But I'm really gravitating to the more neutral colorways lately. Maybe because I have so much yarn and so many socks and so many sweaters that are these bright colors. And I need to widen my palette a little bit. Anyway, I really liked how this, this yarn looked on the website, so I asked him if I could get this colorway, and he dyed it up special for me, because he did not have any in the shop at the time. But that's what it's looking like um, on the sock. I've only done two small little to toes, uh, because I just cast this on last night. Um, I finished up my other socks, and as soon as all those other socks were... Um, bound off, I immediately cast on for these. I got this this um, toe done last night and this one partially done this morning. And I really didn't do too much knitting at the office except for on my secret project that I can't show you. Um, so yeah, I really like it. Um, you know, a lot of the um, dyers have very similar bases. But I have not seen this base from any other dyer, this, this, um, anything similar to this. I really, really like it. It is nice and soft. Um, it's a four-ply yarn. And um, it is superwash merino, 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. And it is, it is really nice. And Steve, you did a fabulous job on, on this color you know just the layering of colors and you know it is really nice hopefully you'll be able to see that variation in color on the camera I I love it 
Um, I could definitely see myself making a sweater with this yarn. I might have to um, order up a sweater's worth in his DK base um, of this colorway because, mm, nice, very nice. Uh, but really, I have so much sweater's worth of yarn right now, I need to slow down. In fact, I was on the Knit Picks website this morning um, thinking about buying some lace. <laughs> Because I wanted, I want to do um, Kimberly Sock Bunny's um, Knit Along. And I have some lace, and I'll talk about it more in a little bit. But I'm, I'm just crazy, and I wanted to go buy some more lace yarn from Knit Picks. Because I, I was going to wear my Icarus shawl um, this morning, but it didn't quite go with this shirt. Uh, but I pulled the yarn out. It's actually Knit Picks old um, gossamer, um, lace, but I really like the feel of it, and I think their shadow base is either the same base with a new name, or a new base that's similar, and I really wanted to make another shawl with that, and I thought that Kimberly's, um, shawl would be perfect. Oh, goodness, my phone is upstairs, and an alarm is going off, <laughs> so hang tight for a moment while I go and turn that off. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> um, anyway, so, yeah, I was over at Knit Picks and, tr and thinking about buying yarn, and I just had to walk away. I I don't know. I'm crazy insane like that sometimes, and um, I'll get into that at another time when I answer um, one of the questions from um, the What Do You Want to Know About thread. <laughs> Anyway, this is Fabulous Yarn. If you haven't um, checked out Steve's shop, um, Leading Man uh, Fiber Arts, then go and check it out. Um, he is on Big Cartel, and I heard somebody else talk about this. They said that the, um, the address on his card was wrong, but if you, look, if you do a search for Leading, Leading Man Fiber Arts in Google, you will find it because that is how I found it. Actually, I think I went to Steve's page. I don't remember how I found it. I think he, he linked me over there, actually. Anyway, but I did go back and, and search for it in Google, and it came right up. So uh, go and check out his bases. I will definitely be checking out some of his other bases as well. Um, Showstopper was my first choice, but I want to try out, like I said, his DK base. And... Um, I think the Show Stealer, too, is the other one that I really want to try. But I'm really um, excited about getting um, these socks started. And I will be able to tell you a little bit more about how I like this yarn next time. But right now, so far, loving it. And I think those are all my knitting projects. That's a lot. I did a lot of knitting um, just this week, actually. Uh, most of all this stuff was done this week. Next up, spinning. I did do some spinning, not a whole lot. Um, I started the fifth braid of the Fiber Nymph um, custom colorway for Knittopia. I didn't bring any of my spinning over here because really, what is there to see? I'll just tell you about it. Um, I did a little bit on my loop bat, not too much. And I did get a bit done at the office on the Into the World um, fiber that I've been spinning for quite some time. Nothing got finished. Um, no revelations happened. I did also spin for probably 15 minutes on my um, into the um, not into the world wool wool gatherings um, on my golden spindle for just a tiny tiny bit, not not very long at all. Um, no stash enhancements. Oh wait, there was stash enhancements this week. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, last week I announced that um, North Cabin Fiber Crafts um, was having a coupon code because we are doing a knit along in November, December. So she has a coupon code that is um, running September and October. And it is Knit Blooms 2013, and it's 10% off. And on September 1st, 
I went over to her shop and um, used the coupon code on two of the skeins that I've been looking at for a while. And this is one of them. It's the dog sled base. And it is um, Superwash Merino and Nylon. And it is the Sangria colorway. Love it. I needed to get some more yarn. I have um, a specific skein picked out that I'm going to um, knit on when we do the knit along. Um, but I wanted to get some more. And I'm also going to be spinning on some fiber uh, during our cow cow sow. And this is the other one that I got. Sorry for the crinkle. This is the other one I got, which is also on the dog sled base. And it is patio cushions. Isn't that cool? With the burgundy and the teal. Love it. So, I am really excited about um, getting these knit up. But again, I have another colorway that I don't think you can quite see um, up in my cabinets. But it's right up here waiting. In, it's in the empty spot. Um, it's waiting for me to cast it on November 1st for our knit along. But these were my stash enhancements for this week, which I really did not need to get, um, other than the um, Steve's yarn, too. I really didn't need to get that, but I did. And then um, Lori sent the prizes for the knit along that will be happening in November and December. I'm going to go ahead and show them to you now so that you can go and buy some yarn and fiber so that you can participate in November and December so that you can win some prizes. This is one of the prizes and it is her monster bag. This bag is huge. I could almost fit in this bag. I know I could probably get at least three, four cats in here. <laughs> it is huge. And it is this awesome sheepy fabric. And this will be for one lucky winner in the um, knit along, spin along, crochet along. So that is one prize. And then, and it comes with a, um, a cute little button from North Cabin Fiber Crafts. And then another prize is this braid of fiber. That is also in the Patio Cushions colorway. And it is um, New Region is the, is the content. And it is four ounces. So that's another prize. And it also comes with a button. And I am going to be donating two $20 gift certificates to Lori's shop um, for the knit along as well. So run on over to her shop, North Cabin Fiber Crafts at Etsy. I'll put a link in the show notes. And use your 10% off coupon, the Knit, knit Blooms 2013, 10% off. In addition to that, she's going to be sending um, people who make purchases, she's going to be sending you a dollar off um, coupon um, as well for your next purchase after that. So she has lots of very cool things in her shop. So get stocked up on your yarn and fiber so that you can participate in our um, knit along, crochet along, spin along come November. You've got little time to order, but don't forget. What else do we have here? Um, speaking of, um, well, we're going to do some prizes here in a minute, but I also want to tell you about the Share the Love September. We are on the 13th of the month, and nobody has posted in the thread. Have you all already put comments on every single one of your favorite podcasts? I can't believe it. Well, I'm hoping that some people want to share the love this month and go over to your favorite podcasts. Knitting Bloom's not included because that's a separate drawing. But go over to your favorite podcast, post a comment on iTunes, and then come back to the thread in the, uh, the Ravelry group on Knitting Blooms and post your comment and also post a link to the podcast 
so that others can find the podcast if they don't already know about them. Um, and that will be for a giftable pattern on Ravelry, um, $10 or less. So let's, um, I have lots more to tell you about my favorite things and also, um, we have some drawings. So let's do the drawings. Okay. Actually, I meant to tell you about this. I told you that I wanted to make, um, Kimberly Sock Bunny's, um, bee leaf carton, bee leaf, um, pie shawl, half pie shawl. And I think, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to start it just yet because I still want to buy that Knit Picks yarn. But I'm going to give it some thought, and this is what I'm thinking about so far right now. <clears throat> Using this skein of Highland Handmaid's Mountain Laurel Lace in the lilac colorway with these beads. <clears throat> now, I'm not 100% set on this yet. I'm going to think about it for a while. And I'm not 100% set on using the beads. I might skip the beads, but I'm not sure yet. I really want to do Kimberly's pattern, um, but I kind of have a lot of stuff on the needles right now, and I've got a lot in my brain that I want to start. But her knit-along is for three months, so I'm thinking that I should have more than enough time to do it. But I'm not dead set on this color. I seriously am thinking about placing an order with Knit Picks to get some of their shadow lace. Um, so I might decide that this weekend. So either I'll have it cast on next week with this yarn, or maybe I will have ordered some more yarn. I'm not sure yet. So that's stuff that's coming up. Okay, so let's do the drawings. I have already done all the drawings for Barmaids and the Knitopia stuff bags. And I wanted to do something a little bit different this week rather than doing the um, the random number generator. I don't know why. I just wanted something different. So I cut little slips of paper with numbers. So I have all these these slips of paper with numbers on them. No, I can see. But they all have numbers. They're all in there. And I just put enough numbers in there for um, the Knittopia stuff bag. And then um, I drew those prizes, those numbers, and then I put the numbers back in and I drew for the barmaids. And if I got a number, because I think there was 125 entries for barmaids and like 160 something for the stuff bags. If I got a number over 125, I just drew another number for barmaids. So let me tell you who won. It was fun. I liked doing that that way a little bit. E it was a little easier for me than trying to do it on as a random number generator on my phone. I don't know why, but I, I liked it better. And it wasn't that hard. I mean, I had, I, all I did was cut up little pieces. Okay, so here we go. The first winner of the Knitopia stuff bag is number two, B Rocker, and that's Brenda. The next person is number 92, Lily52, and that's Lily. The next person is number 56, Mommy Debbie, and that's Debbie. The next person is number 104, Siberian Cat, and that's Penny. The next person is number 37, Books Biker, and that's Barbara. Number 118, Kpar 62, and that's Kathy. Then number 133, Real Yankee, who is Jean. Number 166, Lynn W., who is Lynn. Number 81, DJ Muir, I think is how you pronounce it, and that's Jo Lynn. And number 90, Raspberry Cat Girl, and that's Tracy. So congratulations to all of you. Get in contact with me with your mailing address, and I will mail out the Knitopia stuff bag. And that was the bags, the Lion Brand bag, with all the different patterns and whatnot in it. So I will get those packaged up and ready to ship out so that as soon as you send me your information, I can slap the label on it, and off it will go to you. And um, then we have the barmaid's drawing. 
Now, I liked that we had the drawing for four weeks. Now, the Natopia st stuff bag, originally I was going to only have for two weeks, but I kept it open for four weeks, and I'm glad that I did because a lot more people entered to win. And I think by having it open for four weeks, it gave more people an opportunity to enter to win. So I think most of the drawings in the future were, are going to be open for four weeks because I loved that more people were had an opportunity to throw their name in. Now for the barmaids, we were going to draw for one travel pack, but I decided that because it was open for four weeks, we're going to draw for two prizes this week. So the first prize is for a travel pack, and it goes to number 10, who is Knitting Den, Denise. So Denise, congratulations, you win the travel pack. Just get in contact with me and I will send over that coupon code for you. And the next winner is for $15 off your order, and that goes to number 32, Knitting Mary B, and that's Mary. So congratulations, Mary, to you. And if you just contact me, I will send you your coupon code. So congratulations to all of the winners for the stuff bag as well as the barmaid's drawing. Now we have the Knit or the um, iTunes comments, and I added all of the new people that um, put in the comment between the last time we drew a name and now including the one from Australia, Pink Scrapbooker, I think it was. And all those went in there today. I just cut them up just before I got started. And I always drew a name, but then I'm like, no, I want to draw this one on air. And all the names are in the bag. There's my little label that says iTunes comments. And once you get drawn out of this bag, you are out for good. But um, until you get drawn, you're in there. Uh, okay, here we go. This is the name. And it is Knit Colorado. So if you are Knit Colorado and you posted a comment, I don't know what day, I guess I should have put the dates on here, but like you're going to really remember what date you put your comment on there. But Knit Colorado, you are the winner of the um, giftable pattern on Ravelry. So just get in contact with me. Let me know what pattern you would like. $7 or less. And I will send that to you as soon as you let me know what pattern you want. So again, congratulations to all of the winners. We had lots of winners this week. I love, I love it when we have winners. Fabulous. Okay, let's talk about my favorite things. We're, we're, we're now at an hour. <laughs> just about. My favorite things this week, I'll try and be quick, and I'll have to do the question next week. Hopefully, speaking of next week, um, as long as I am doing my 200,000 steps a week, which in theory is supposed to last for five more weeks, I am going to continue to podcast every other week. As soon as that goal is done, or if I back out early, depending on how things go after how I've been feeling the last couple days and how they go for the next few days. Um, once, once I'm done with the 200,000 steps a week, I'm going to try and go back to um, a weekly recording because I just have so much information to share with you after two weeks that the shows are too long. Anyway, <laughs> so my favorite things this week. The first thing is Whisper Sync between Amazon and Audible. Love it. Now, it's been around for a while, um, but I haven't really used it all that much because usually I'm listening to an audiobook or reading a book. But this week I have been um, listening to and reading Gone Girl. And I like to read, so I try not to listen to audiobooks all that often unless it's a really hard book to get into. I mean, I love Audible, and I do have a lot of audiobooks, but again, I, I prefer to read. Um, but sometimes I just don't have time to read, so it's nice to have the audio. But yeah, I've been switching back and forth between um, reading Gone Girl and listening to Gone Girl. Usually at night, I'm at night 
before I go to bed and in the morning while I'm having breakfast, I like to read. But then when I'm driving in the car and then when I'm at the office and stuff like that, it's easier for me to listen to the audiobook. So I've been using that whisper sync to go back and forth between the two, and it's fabulous. I love it. The next thing that is my favorite thing this week, salted caramel mocha from Starbucks. They only had these in the fall, and I don't know how long they've had them, but I've had um, two in the last two weeks because they are fabulous. I, I learned about them. I discovered them last year, and when they went away in the, in the um, spring, I think it was, I was totally bummed, but they're back, and now I get to have a treat at least once a week. I Maybe twice a week, but... Definitely once a week, I like to have um, salted caramel mocha. <laughs> Another alarm. <laughs> I have so many alarms on my phone, because if I don't, I will forget everything. Anyway, um, and the third favorite thing this week are learning smartphones. Yep, I love it. And what I mean by this is, first of all, let me tell you, I am going to Zombie Nipocalypse 2014. And what I love about the smartphone, and I love about what I love about Zombie Nipocalypse is I'm going. That's fabulous. But the, the learning smartphone thing is that I started to type in Nipocalypse. And obviously it's not really a word, but I type in Nipocalypse and it knows what the word is. The next time I typed Nipocalypse, it automatically popped it in. I thought it was the coolest thing because I had to put in my calendar event and stuff like that on my phone. So I love that my phone learns what I'm trying to type and even if it's not a real word, it still comes up. Fabulous. So those are my favorite things in a nutshell, really quick because I know we're already over an hour. Um, and again, like I said, in a couple weeks, I'm going to go back to the weekly recording and, um, I'm still going to be doing the tutorials and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to work that in. If I'm going to put it in with the video again, with the regular podcast again, or if I'm going to post it separately, we'll figure all that out, um, as we go forward. And I'll try and get more of those, um, what, what you've always wanted to know questions answered. I'm going to still try and get more tutorials done. I've got um, two more tutorials that I've got all the pieces ready to record the tutorial. Hopefully this weekend I will get motivated to do that. Um, so I have a tutorial for next weekend. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I've got for you this week. It's a lot. So I am planning, I have all weekend, I don't know um, that I have really have anything planned. I am not painting the bedroom yet. We have decided to hire somebody to, the same drywall guy, finish up the drywall. Steve totally backed out of doing the, finishing up the drywall on the closet. So that guy is supposed to come back, I don't know, sometime soon. Um, he was supposed to hopefully be available yesterday or today, but obviously he wasn't. But hopefully next week he will be able to get over here and get that done. So maybe next weekend I'll be able to start painting. <sighs> and maybe by the end of October the bedroom will be completely back to normal. I'll have all my new bedding on the bed. I'll have my chair in there. I'll have my nice little nook that I can sit and read and knit before I go to bed. It will be so nice to finally have it done. But I need to have him finish doing the drywall before I can paint. Um, so hopefully sometime soon. Um, yeah, and that's it. So I hope you guys have a great couple of weeks, and I will talk to you in two weeks. Actually, if you come to do the knit night, which I forgot to tell you about, next Saturday, the 21st, is the, um, is the, net, the next virtual knit night. Uh, so... Come and join us. Last weekend we had a number of people. I think we were up to um, seven or eight people in the group at one time. And we had a fabulous time. It was really great. So come and bring your project and just come and sit and knit and chat with us for a while. That is next Saturday, September 21st at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. 
So that's all I've got for you this week. And again, I hope you have a great week. I hope your knitting blooms. Bye. No matter what time of year it is, your feet can be sand already. We all know there are hundreds of thousands of feet that are in need of some serious help and Oh For Feet's Sake can help. Oh For Feet's Sake is a solid foot moisturizer and Barmaids uses the perfect combination of skin loving oils including essential oils, butters and ingredients ideal for your feet. You will be amazed at how quickly Oh For Feet's Sake can turn your feet from rough and dry to smooth and soft. Just follow the instructions and in less than two weeks you will see drastic improvement to your feet. You can purchase O for Feet's Sake at www.bar-maids.com. There are two scents, Soft Vanilla and Peppermint Plus.